Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another video. So today I'm following up on what I think was the last video, assuming I'm posting these in the order that I think I'm going to post them, which was a video on show don't tell and I'm going to be talking about specificity. So originally I had scripted these out to be one video, so I decided to split it into two, make it a little more digestible because show don't tell and specificity are very related concepts. Specificity is often a means to showing, but they're not necessarily the same. And as much as I talk about specificity, I think I talk about it in every video, like, oh, Shailen's talking about specificity. Fire is hot, water is wet. I've never actually made a video just on specificity on this channel. This pairs very intrinsically with the show don't tell video, so I will leave that in the cards and in the description if you want to check that out, they're very related. But today I'm going to be talking specifically about using specific details, cutting abstract or vague language and replacing it with specificity, and walking through a bit of a longer example. But I also think it is, and I've said this before and I kind of stand by it, the key to good writing. When I understood how to use specificity, and it's not a very difficult concept, like you guys will probably be able to apply this if, if you're not already immediately, like it's actually very easy to apply. The quality of my writing shot up immediately because it's very easy to implement this and it really, really does improve the richness and the uniqueness of your story. It takes your story from something very vague and kind of not unoriginal but non-specific to itself. The main thing that you want to be on the lookout for in your writing is vague or abstract language. So vague language are non-specific words, um, indefinite words. And a lot of this time it's words with some or thing in them. So things, something, sometime, somewhere. These are very vague words. They don't really tell us anything. For example, sorry, I'm looking down at my computer. Um, we spent some time at the park. How much time did you spend at the park? Like, <laughs> was it an hour? Was it 15 minutes? Was it five days? Like, did you camp out there? I have no idea based on this sentence. Um, I picked up some things at the store what things. You could have picked up things needed to make a nice dinner, or you could have picked up things to murder a man and hide the body. It was somewhat cold out. How cold is somewhat exactly? I have no idea. This depends a lot on um, personal opinion. Like, maybe what I find cold is not cold at all for you if you live in Antarctica, but maybe you live somewhere really warm. I'm Canadian. Uh, maybe what I find kind of warm in a nice day is freezing for you. Like. This is so indefinite, we really have no idea. So you really wanna be on the lookout for these kinds of weak, vague words, um, and really only use these kinds of words very intentionally. Um, but if you can specify more, you really wanna be on the lookout for these vague words. So that's the first thing to look for when um, being more specific. The other thing to look for is abstract language. Unlike vague words, which we don't know what it's referring to, with an abstract word, we do know what it's referring to, but it has no sensory appeal. So this is ideas, emotions, states, qualities, concept. So for example, freedom, that's an idea. Sadness, that's an emotion. Um, tired, that's a state. Pretty, that's a quality. Math, that's a concept. I can say sadness to you and you probably picture something. You maybe even feel something, but it's probably different from what I feel. And obviously, we both have an understanding of what sadness is, but what we're gonna picture, what we're gonna feel, what we're gonna remember is different. When I say pretty, we're also all gonna think of different things. We know what the word pretty means. Um, you know, it means aesthetically pleasing to look at, but what you find pretty might be different from what I find pretty. You also want to be look on the lookout for abstract language in your work and trying to cut that and replacing it with concrete language, which is much more specific and is more so a form of showing. Concrete language, on the other hand, is anything that we can experience with the five senses. I have said before, and I've heard it said before, that um, a concrete word is something you can punch, but that's not entirely accurate. Like, that's a way to think of it, but it's not entirely true, because, I mean, there are even physical objects that I can't punch, like a raindrop. I don't know how I would punch a single raindrop, but it's still concrete. And there are things like, for example, a sound, like the sound of a drum. Okay, obviously there are lots of different kinds of drums, but like we know what that sounds like. It's still concrete because we can experience it with one of our senses, even though I cannot punch the sound of a drum. Here are some abstract sentences. The painting is beautiful. I guarantee that no one watching this video just pictured the same painting. Because I didn't tell you anything about what the painting looks like, I only told you that it was beautiful, and that's a very subjective quality. We had fun at the park. 
you could have chased some squirrels, maybe that's fun for you. You could have played jump rope, maybe that was fun for you. I don't know, maybe you like kidnapped someone, maybe that was fun for you. I have no idea what your idea of fun is. You could have played capture the flag, you could have been day drinking, I really don't know. On the other hand, in a concrete sentence, I could say the painting of the tree is red and gold. So obviously this isn't a fantastic sentence, it's still not that specific, but we know it's a painting of a tree and it's red and gold. This is concrete and it's um, it's objective. Concrete language is much more objective, abstract language is very subjective. Saying the painting was beautiful gives you no idea what the painting looks like. Similarly, we rode the ferris wheel and ate mini donuts at the amusement park. I guess I made it an amusement park here and it was just a park and the first one. That's how vague it was, I just said park. Yeah. Instead of saying that we had fun, I described things that objectively are fun. Like who's not having fun eating mini donuts? No one. That's an objectively fun thing to do and if you disagree with me, I don't know, it's kind of messed up of you. So that's kind of like what concrete versus abstract language looks like. Um, but a lot of the time when we're applying specificity, what you're going to find in your writing is language that's actually, it's, it's specific enough. For example, in that, sen in that, um, that sentence about the tree, if the painting of the tree is red and gold. This is still actually quite vague because we don't know what kind of tree it is. We don't know what kind of painting it is. Like, is it a watercolor painting? Is it an oil painting? Um, what? I have no idea what kind of tree. I guess I'm imagining it as a maple tree because it said it was red and gold and they get very colorful like that. Truly no idea. So we could make this a much more specific sentence by saying the oil painting of the maple tree is red and gold. We've gone a layer deeper into those nouns. So I've got some examples here. So here's a, here's a sentence. We ate a platter of cheese and drank a bottle of wine. You probably wouldn't, if you were reading this sentence in a book, stop to go, that's awful writing, but we could make it better writing by being more specific. What kind of cheese? What kind of wine? So you could rewrite the sentence, we ate a wheel of brie and drank a bottle of Merlot. That's a kind of wine, right? I don't know anything about wine. Same number of words, but it's just more vivid. Um, you know, saying we ate uh, some cheese versus saying we ate some brie, like people know what that looks like. They know what that specific type of cheese tastes like. Personally, I, I, if you said it was a bottle of Merlot versus any other kind of wine, it wouldn't change my understanding of the taste of the wine, but it does make it a bit of a more interesting sentence because it's a more interesting word. Let's go to another example here. A withering plant sat on the windowsill next to a jar of pens. It's not awful writing. You're probably not gonna notice this and be like, this is really mad. But we could specify it a little more. What type of plant, what type of pens? So I rewrote this as a withering peace lily sat on the windowsill next to a jar of watercolor pencils. You know, again, nothing wrong with pens. Maybe they were just regular pens, but I specified what type of pens. I guess a watercolor pencil isn't technically a pen. Whatever, but this tells me more about the character. Usually people who aren't artists don't just have watercolor pencils sitting around. Specifying what type of plant it is um, makes it just a more interesting sentence. Even if the person reading doesn't know specifically what a peace lily looks like, it is a more interesting word. So here's another one. Um, she put on a dress and some shoes. So again, this is probably a very throwaway detail in the context of a story. The character's just getting dressed. Usually it's not that important, but we could learn something about the character. Um, we could specify what type of dress and what type of shoes and learn something about her style. So I said she put on a pinafore and some combat boots. Very quirky choices of her. I assume that this character is like the protagonist of a YA novel based on those styling choices. We have learned something before. She, it could have been literally any kind of dress. It could have been a wedding dress for all I know. Like who knows? Like maybe she was putting on a ball gown. So now we have a better understanding of the situation. So she's just dressed kind of casually um, and also her style. And so then this last one that I've got is a little more focused on character. So this is the kind of thing that you could think of in the larger scope of your story when you're creating a character, making them more specific. Here I'm illustrating it in one sentence, but it applies to the larger scope. So she worked as a doctor and made time for her hobbies on the weekend, but rarely spent time with her family. So the questions that I have based on this sentence are, what kind of medicine does she practice? What are her hobbies and which family members she not spending time with? So I rewrote the sentence as, she worked as an anesthesiologist and spent her weekends kayaking and making macrame placemats, which she sold on Etsy, but rarely spent time with her children. We've learned quite a lot about the character. 
We know what kind of medicine she practices. She's outdoorsy, she kayaks, and she also makes macrame placements. And the fact that she sells them on Etsy says something about her character because she probably makes a lot of money based on her job. So she's not doing this for money. She's maybe she has like kind of an entrepreneurial streak. Maybe this is a career aspiration that she didn't follow because she felt pressure from her family or uh, to go into medicine, but there's a lot more we can learn about the character and infer from the character And we also know now that it's her children She's not spending time with her own children because she's so busy being a doctor and running her Etsy shop Kind of the takeaways here of how to make the writing more specific We've looked at some examples kind of the ground rules are you provide details of how things are happening rather than just what happened you describe what emotions or states feel like or what induced those emotions or states rather than labeling them. You specify nouns to a deeper level of categorization. Um, you might use research to find more specific terms. And in general, you're giving the how instead of just the what. And when you are giving the what, it's a more specific what. All of that said, I have written out a longer example. So this example um, is quite long, and I purposely made this paragraph very, very bad. And the reason this paragraph is bad is for a lot of reasons, but the main one in this case is because it's very, very vague. So I wrote this bad version of the paragraph, which I will read to you, and then I wrote a better version where I specified it, and then I wrote an even better version. Um, so you can see the really vague version, and then kind of the middle ground, and then see it bumped up to like that next level. So let's start by looking at the bad version. The weather that day made me happy. It was very cheerful. Even though my relationship with my sister Caroline was strained, we went to some events. We wanted to feel free that day. A few times she disappointed or embarrassed me, but for the most part we had fun. She won some stuff from a carnival game. I was trying to be nice, so I bought her dinner. When we got home, our mother was very angry with us for staying out so late. This upset us and we realized we weren't as happy as we'd been pretending to be all day. This is a very vague paragraph. Looking back at this, um, the, the weather that day made her happy. How so? How was the weather cheerful? What did that look like? Um, why was their relationship strained? What kind of events did they go to? Why do they want to feel free and what does that mean for them? Um, a few times she disappointed her. How many times exactly? Um, how did she disappoint or embarrass her? How did they have fun? What did she win from the carnival game and what game was it? She bought her dinner. What kind of dinner? Mother was angry. What did that look like? This upset us. How did they react? So in the next version of the paragraph, um, I kind of specified a lot of these vague bits. It's still not impeccable writing. There's still a lot missing, but this version I think is substantially better. So here's the, the middle ground version. The weather that day was energizing and bright. The sun was shining. Even though my sister Caroline and I had been fighting a lot recently, we went to a fair. We wanted to feel grown up and unrestrained by our parents' rules. Caroline embarrassed me when she made a scene after losing a carnival game and disappeared for an hour after lunch. But the rest of the day we went on rides. She won some stuffed animals in a beanbag toss. I didn't want to fight with her, so I bought her a corn dog. When we got home, our mother yelled at us for staying out so late. This made Caroline cry and I just retreated to my room, realizing we weren't as happy as we'd been pretending to be all day. So this is better. This is clearly much better. We get a lot more specific details. We know what kind of weather it is. It's a bright day. Um, we know why the relationship is strained. They've been fighting a lot recently. Caroline embarrassed her by making a scene. The prize she won was a stuffed animal. Uh, for dinner, she bought her a corn dog. Uh, their mother yelled at them. So it's more specific, but I still have a lot of questions. So for example, They'd been fighting a lot. What had they been fighting about? We wanted to feel unrestrained by our parents' rules. What rules? Says Caroline embarrassed me. That's telling. We shouldn't have to say that Caroline embarrassed her. If we get the context of the scene, it should be clear that she, she felt embarrassed. She wants some stuffed animals, some, that's a vague word. Here's the final version, which still isn't incredible, but it has a lot more specific details and you will notice it is a lot longer. So here's the final version. I woke up that morning to birds chittering outside my window. The sun gleamed through the blinds and outside the sky was a robin egg blue. The night before, Caroline had insisted it was my turn to take out the garbage, even though I knew it was her turn, and she ended up throwing one of her shoes at me. It was a Doc Martin too. She'd aimed it right at my face, though I dodged it and the heel dented my wall. We've been blaming our parents. They still nagged us for not eating all our greens and hovered to read our texts from over our shoulders. We wouldn't have had the fight at all if they weren't so insistent about following their chores schedule. Not mentioning the previous night's incident, Carolyn and I took the bus downtown to an amusement park. Within the first hour, Caroline threw a rubber duck at a carney's face when she lost a game of balloon pop and only got fourth prize. I ducked into the concession stand, but lost her in the crowd for an hour. After we split a bag of kettle corn for lunch, we waited in line for the Ferris wheel and went on the roller coaster seven times. By the time it was evening, Caroline 
Caroline won a stuffed polar bear in a game of beanbag toss. She was gloating her win to the 12-year-old boy she'd won against, and I bought her a corn dog to distract her. When we got home, our mother yelled at us for staying out past our curfew. Caroline started to cry and buried her face in the giant stuffed polar bear's fluffy belly. I retreated to my room and stared out the window, the sky a hazy black with no visible stars. I could hear Caroline cry through the walls. I thumbed through the calendar on my wall and counted how many days it would be until I could move out. 114. This gives us a much richer depiction of not only the events but also the characters. Um, we get a much clearer understanding of the relationship between the sisters, which really is what this is about. You know, in the context of the story, which I don't know what story this is, <laughs> this is random, is it that important that they went to the amusement park and went on some rides? Like, those details aren't really that important. What this excerpt is getting at is trying to show us the relationship between the sisters and how they relate to each other from this last excerpt here that the main character is trying really hard to make things work with her sister but her sister is a bit of a loose cannon and it's not helped by how strict their parents are and even though she's putting in so much effort at the end of the day she's just left thinking about when she can leave and not see them again. We get the sense that the main character feels smothered by her family, she feels a little trapped, she feels like a lot of responsibility is falling on her and maybe that's starting to bubble over hence why they're fighting over who takes out the garbage. Maybe the main character feels like all the responsibility is always falling on her because her sister just such a loose cannon. We can gain so much more about the characters and also just from a visual aspect, from a, an interest of reading aspect, it's much more interesting. You know like the description of their fight saying um, what they fought over and then it you know devolves into her throwing a shoe um, and the main character specifies that it was a Doc Martin as if that makes a lot of difference. Like it wasn't just a shoe, like she didn't throw a flip flop at me, like she threw a combat boot um, and like it dented the wall. Like these are all specific details that we can picture. Um, it's a bit voicier. The whole thing is a lot richer. It's not amazing writing. This is the best thing I've ever written by any means. But I think for the sake of this example it does showcase what specific writing looks like, especially compared to that first example where there was nothing to gain. We we couldn't gather anything about the relationship. All we could really get from that first version, um, really the only characterizing emotional detail we got was when it when she said at the end we realized we weren't as happy as we've been pretending to be all day and I guess that little bit about them saying they wanted to feel free. We don't really get anything to relate to from the characters and we also don't even know what it means for them. Like you want to feel free like from what and like why and like what does that what's freedom mean to you? I hope that that longer example gives um, an idea of what specificity looks like. It really is a very easy technique to implement that can really punch up your writing. If you struggle just with general imagery and feeling like you struggle to write, you know, nice descriptions, adding a layer of specificity can really punch up your descriptions without feeling too fanciful even. That is really all I've got to say on specificity. I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video.